Good morning, church family. Will you stand with us? To God be the glory, great things he has done. Sing it out. Sing it out to the Lord. To God.
ventured over to the sanctuary this week and looked around at the remodeling that's going on. And I'll tell you what, it is so beautiful. The woodwork that is going in and trimming around those beautiful stained glass windows. And I asked the contractor, can I plan on Christmas decorations in this room? And he said, yes, but I know better. <laughs> I've built a few things. You don't ever move in, for, you don't ever plan when you're building a house, plan on moving in for Christmas. I don't know, but that's what he said. And the seats are supposed to be here. Uh, Karen, what date did you tell me? December the 10th. December the 10th. So I don't know. It might happen. But we may have to wait till after the first year. But anyway, it's coming together quick. Isn't that awesome? So if you get a chance, uh, stop by there and uh, take a peek in and look and see. It's just going to be absolutely breathtaking. It's, and it's just opened the room up. Oh, and the baptistry will be able to see when we can baptize our kids. It's, it's just awesome. So thank you. And please remember, we've got to close this thing out. We uh, uh, pray about your, your final gift on this thing. And uh, let's get this thing paid for and honor God with it, okay? How you doing out there? All right, me too. We're so honored to have with us those of you who are our guests. Uh, it's all we ask from you when the offering plate comes by as we... Would like to ask if you would to fill out just a little spot on our worship God and tear that off and stick that in there so that we can let you know about future events with your mailing address, your email address. And so we just want to stand and greet each other, greet our guests. So let's do that right now. <laughs>
Remember what he's done for us. Remember what he's done for you this week. Praise his name.
Father, we come to you now asking you to forgive us our sins. Thank you for each and every blessing. Thank you for the opportunity to come and worship you. Thank you for this beautiful music that's lifted to you, Lord. Open our hearts to true worship as we as we do this. Lord, we look forward to the message come from Brother Mike that we, that we may worship you through his word. And now, Lord, thank you for the opportunity to worship you through our giving. Everything that we have is really nothing that we have but all that you have. And thank you for the opportunity to give back a small portion of the things that you have blessed us with. And we pray that this will be used to the furtherance of your kingdom. In Christ's name I pray, amen.
You know, we think of being on the hill as the good times and the valleys as the, the tough times when uh, you're discouraged. And uh, I, I don't know about you, but the enemy, you know, he's always trying to discourage us. He's always trying to um, get us to forget who we are. We're children of the king. You know, that means you are a prince or a princess, right? Absolutely. And our father owns the cattle on a thousand hills. And he takes care of his children. And we've been talking about being strong and being courageous. Well, today I want to point out to you that it takes courage to obey the word of the Lord. You're living in a culture that does not care what the Bible says about anything. You know, you can't say, you can't point out something and say, that's wrong because it says it in the Word. You're living in a world that doesn't care about that. But you and I do care. And we need to have the courage to obey what the Word says no matter what. I mean, it's just kind of human nature that we fall into that trap of thinking arrogantly, I would add, that somehow we can do it better than what God says. That we actually would have the audacity to think that our way is better. Uh, you know, we like the easy way. We like the shortcut. Uh, we don't like pain, you know. And sometimes, no pain, no gain, you know. And that's the reason we don't advance. It's because we try to avoid that pain. Because sometimes when you obey God's Word, it's uncomfortable. It can be painful. It can involve rejection. And so we try to avoid that. But I love Romans 8.28. All things work for good of those who love God and are called according to His purpose. That verse doesn't say that everything's good. What it does say is whatever is going on in your life, whether you consider it good or bad, and you know we, we define that for ourselves, but whatever it is, God can take it and He can bring good out of it. God is in the business of blessing. He's in the business of of guiding his children. And so he takes the good, bad, and the ugly of my life and your life, and he always brings good out of it. I want us to go back to this text that we referred to several times, Joshua chapter 1, and let's stand together for the reading of God's Word. After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord... The Lord said to Joshua, son of Nun, Moses' aid, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now then, you and all these people get ready to cross the Jordan River into the land I'm about to give to them, to the Israelites. I will give you every place where you set your foot, as I promised Moses. Your territory will extend from the desert to Lebanon, from the great river, the Euphrates, all the Hittite country, to the Mediterranean Sea in the west. No one will be able to stand against you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I'll be with you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Be strong and courageous, because you will lead these people to inherit the land I swore to their ancestors to give them. Be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey all the law my servant Moses gave you. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left that you may be successful wherever you go. Keep this book of the law always on your lips. Meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. Have I not commanded you be strong and courageous? Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Pray with me. Lord Jesus. Thank you for your word. We know it's true. 
may it come alive in our hearts and in our lives today. And I pray that every one of us will leave this place with a new ounce of courage. And God, that whatever we might be discouraged about today, that we might be able to replace that discouragement with courage so that we can be bold and we can be strong for you. God, I know that you're going to answer my prayer, for I pray it in faith. In your name I pray. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. This passage holds the key to being courageous. It said, what Mike Kessler didn't say, the Word of God said that if you are a courageous person, if you live a courageous life, you're going to be prosperous. How many of you would like to be prosperous? It ought to be every hand in the room. Moses had brought the people of God to the brink of the promised land 40 years before uh, what's happening in this scripture. And there was a problem. There was a faith failure. Moses sent in 12 spies. Those 12 spies came back. They gave their report on what the land was like. And only two of them said, we can do this. We can go in there because God has told us to, and we can conquer the land. And that was Joshua and Caleb. The other ten spies did not have faith. All they could see were the giants in the land. All they could see were the obstacles and, and the large number of people. And they felt defeated and discouraged. And so what happened was the people of God, under Moses' leadership got to spend 40 years wandering in the wilderness because of a lack of faith. Been there, done that, got the t-shirt. How about you? You ever been wandering around? You know? Because you didn't step out in faith? Didn't walk the walk? Might have talked the talk, but didn't walk the walk. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. We've got to get that in here. You cannot please God without faith. So, Joshua, here he is, same place, same proposition as before. Joshua says, we are going to go into the land. And this is the assignment that God has given him. The people will need courage and strength to do what God wants them to do. Just like you and I need courage and strength to do the assignments that God gives us to do. So the first thing that I'd like to mention from this passage is we must have courage to fulfill God's purpose for our lives. Joshua is stepping into Moses' footsteps. Look at Deuteronomy 34, 7 with me for just a minute. Moses was 120 years old when he died, yet his eyes were not weak, nor his strength gone. So in other words, even at 120, Moses had good health, and he even had good eyes. I started losing my eyesight when I was in my 40s. I can't imagine living to be 120 and still having good eyes. And I'm, I don't think they had glasses in Moses' day to help with that either. Then look at verses 10 through 12 in Deuteronomy 34. It says, Since then no prophet has risen in Israel like Moses, whom the Lord knew face to face. <coughs> Who did all these signs and wonders the Lord sent him to do in Egypt to Pharaoh and to all his officials and to his whole land. For no one has ever shown the mighty power or performed the awesome deeds that Moses did in the sight of all Israel. So this is the guy that Joshua gets to follow. You know, wonderful, dynamic leader leading a group of faithless people, okay? Wandering around. And so now he's going to step into his shoes. Joshua is taking the people into the promised land, and their job is to conquer that land. 
The enemies have walled cities. They are skilled in warfare. The Israelites have absolutely no experience at all. The enemies have better equipment, things like chariots and, and weapons. And we already learned from the 12 spies before that there are giants or huge people in the land. I've seen a lot of football games like that, haven't y'all, where the team's got real big guys over here and little guys over here, you know. It's kind of what we've got. And Joshua calls the people to action. Verse 10 on chapter 1 of Joshua says that Joshua ordered the officers of the people go through the camp and tell the people, get your provisions ready. Three days from now you will cross the Jordan here to go in and take possession of the land the Lord your God has given you for your own. You've heard me say it before. In God's school, you don't fail. You just get to keep taking the test over and over again until you pass it. Well, here's God's school 101. They're getting ready to do the same thing, the same opportunity they were given before. They failed last time, but we're not going to fail this time. And God tells Joshua, I want you to provide for the people these three things. I want you to trust the people to do the fighting that I'm asking them to do. I want you to meet their needs while they're waging war. And I want them to go into the enemy territory. And so when you read the book of Joshua, you see that sometimes their success when they do what God says, like the story that we study a lot in Sunday school about the walls of Jericho, they come crashing down because the people of God under Joshua's leadership did exactly what the Word of God said. But then you'll read another instance, like in I, when instead of listening to God, there was a, a group of leaders that gathered together and gave Joshua advice. And they said, oh, we don't need to send as many soldiers this time because there's not as many of them. So let's just take a smaller army. And they kind of came up with their own plan. And the, their own plan completely fell apart because it was not God's plan. It was not lined up with the Word of God. Be strong and courageous. God knew that you would be living in discouraging times. He knew that you would be raising your children, your grandchildren, in tough times like we're living in today. A time when crime is worse than it's ever been in our cities across our nation, a time when police are, and leaders are disrespected and mistreated, a time when the precious United Methodist Church is making a decision. John and Charles Wesley have got to be in heaven just scratching their head, having to make a choice between whether they're going to go with the Word of God or be progressive. And so in our, in here in Gilmer, uh, you'll be glad to know that the, our Methodist church had a vote and they decided to go global. And when you become a global Methodist, that means that you still stick to the book. If you stay United Methodist, you're going to do your own thing and good luck with that, right? Okay? But I mean, these are the things that are going on. COVID. Who would have thought that a world epidemic would be politicized? I mean, talk about blowing your mind. Who, who knows who to believe? Who, I mean, this was about our health. And we don't even know who to trust or who to believe. Because we're getting all of this crazy information that doesn't make sense. It takes courage to do many things in life.
But mostly, it takes courage to obey God because so often we're swimming upstream. We're swimming against or we're moving against the crowd. It takes courage to talk to a friend, to try to keep them from wrecking their life. You ever done that? It takes courage when your boss asks you to do something that you know is morally wrong and you decide not to do it knowing that you're probably going to be fired because of that. It takes courage to disagree with a college professor like some of our kids that we're sending off to secular universities are going to have to, are going to need to do. Especially because I think on just about every campus they are being taught that social, socialism is a good thing. And it is not. And I don't know why they don't know their history. But they need to go back and read it again. I'm sorry, I'm getting on my soapbox. Sorry. It takes courage to tell a group of people, I'm sorry, but I can't participate in that. It takes courage to keep your commitment of purity as a young person when most people are not. It takes courage to do what God wants you to do instead of what the world wants you to do. And sometimes you just feel like you're all by yourself. And the enemy, he loves it when you feel like that. Because then he can just beat on you and beat on you and beat on you until you give in. Be strong. Be bold. Be courageous. Our courage is strengthened by the promises of God. Look at the promises that God gave Joshua. Beginning in verse 3 of our text. I will give you every place where you set your foot. Wouldn't that be wonderful? Everywhere you go, it's yours. You just walk on it. You walk on the land. I'm going to give it to you. That was the promise that God made. Your territory will extend from the desert to Lebanon, from the great river, the Euphrates, all the Hittite country to the Mediterranean Sea in the west. No one will be able to stand against you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I'll be with you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. So that's another promise. God's going to be with you the whole step of the way. He's not going to leave you. He's not going to forsake you. Be strong and courageous because you will lead these people to inherit the land I swore to their ancestors to give them. Be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey all the law my servant Moses gave you. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left that you may be successful wherever you go. Keep this book of the law always on your lips. Meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. Count. Count them. The promises that God made. Everywhere you walk, it's yours. Verse 3. God's promise is going to, uh, uh, presence is going to be with you. Everywhere you go, verse 5, verses 7 and 8, God's going to give you success and prosperity. The book of the law is the book of Deuteronomy that God used Moses to write. So under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, Moses penned the words, and these are the words that the people of God are to obey. If you want prosperity and blessing and success, stay true to the Word of God. Ooh, man, I got a few amens out of that. You ought to be standing on a chair by now. Love this book. Have you ever, ever regretted doing anything that this book says? No. All my regrets are all the times that I did not do what this book says. Proverbs 3, verses 5 and 6. Trust in the Lord 
with all your heart. Do not lean on your own understanding. That's what's wrong today. We're trying to lean on our own understanding. Is it okay sometimes to just not understand it? That God might take and do something that just doesn't make sense? Trust the Lord with all your heart. Do not lean on your own understanding in all your ways. Acknowledge Him, and He will make your path straight. Or Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. And that's just a couple of promises that you and I can trust, that we can take to the bank. And I promise you that when you lean on the Word of God, the Lord will carry you. The third thing that I want you to see is that the key to courage is to meditate on God's Word. That's what it says in verse 8 in our text. Keep this book of the law always on your lips. Meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. What does it mean to meditate? It means to, to constantly dwell on the Word. Ask yourself some questions. How does this scripture apply to me? About how I'm living. Boy, just doing that right there would change something. By reading the word and just asking the question, how does that apply to the way I'm living my life? God, is there something that you want me to do? Someone you want me to talk to? Something you want me to change? Now don't read the Word of God for someone else. That is the temptation. You know, like your spouse or your kids or something like that. You read it for you and you apply it to you. And most people surrender partially to God. We keep one area for ourselves. God wants to make you the best you that you can be. He wants to be in control of your character and your personality. And he wants to prosper you and give you success. God tells Joshua, be careful. Read the word. Meditate on it. Be consistent about it. How many people open the Bible today on Sunday and then never open again until next Sunday? That's not going to get it. That's not going to get what you want. It's not going to give you the courage that you need to press on. What is your life like? Are you focused on Jesus, His kingdom, His righteousness, His word? The word of God, the Bible says, is food. You can look at me and see I like food. But do I like spiritual food as much as I like physical food? God knows our baggage. He knows our weaknesses. He knows our needs. He knows what we think we need. He knows what we shouldn't have. And He knows what He wants to give you to prosper you. We need to come to the place where we say, God, all I want is what You want. Sounds simple. I think it's the hardest thing to do. God, all I want is you want what you want. And you cannot have success with that without a focus on the Word of God. Do you know why some people don't tithe? Seriously, do you know why they don't tithe? 
Because they think, well, if I give 10%, well, I might come up needy. And if that's what you think, then you miss the whole thing. God says, trust me, test me, and see if I don't bless you beyond what you could imagine or think. It's a faith act. When you tithe, when you give to the Lord, you're saying, I'm all in, God. I believe you that you're going to take care of my needs. And watch out. Watch out for the miracles that happen. Meditating on the Word of God yields success. For all things work for good of those who love God and are called according to His purpose. And God will take anything that discourages you and He will turn it into something good. Look at Joshua 23, verse 1 and following with me. It says, After a long time had passed, and the Lord had given Israel rest from all their enemies around them, Joshua, by then a very old man, summoned all Israel, their elders, leaders, judges, and officials, and said to them, I am very old. You yourselves have seen everything the Lord your God has done to all these nations for your sake. It was the Lord your God who fought you. Jump to verse 6. Be very strong. Be careful to obey all that is written in the book of the law of Moses without a turning aside to the right or to the left. Do not associate with these nations that remain among you. Do not invoke the names of their gods or swear by them. You must not serve them or bow down to them. But you are to hold fast the Lord your God as you have until now. Skip to verse 29. After these things, Joshua, son of Nun, the servant of the Lord, died at the age of 110. They buried him in the land of his inheritance at Timnath Sarah in the hill country of Ephraim, north of Mount Gash. Israel served the Lord throughout the lifetime of Joshua and of the elders who outlived him and who had experienced everything the Lord had done for Israel. See, when you serve the Lord, when you bless the Lord, you remember those blessings, they pass on to new uh, generations. Joshua gave all the credit for what God had done to God himself and did not take any of the credit himself. They obeyed God and God kept his promises. But as the cycle of life goes, after Joshua, there were the judges. And it says in Judges 21 25, in those days Israel had no king, everyone did as they saw fit. Do you know what that means? Chaos. And that's where we're living today. So, I've got a question for you. How's it working out for you? Is it working out good? Praise God. If it's not working out good, do something about it. Don't sit there stuck. Let God do a miracle <coughs> that only He can get credit for. Meditate. On the Word of God. Meditation on the Word of God equals prosperity and blessing. Pray with me. Lord Jesus, thank you for your Word. We know it's true. Thank you for this opportunity to respond to your Word. God, I pray that as we worship, that we will listen to your Holy Spirit and what you tell us to do. If you tell us to become a part of this church family, now is the opportunity if you tell us to um, repent of the direction that we're going, I pray that we would do that. God, if anyone here is not saved, I pray that they will call upon your name because your word says that anyone who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. 
I pray that they would just pray this simple prayer. Dear Jesus, I know that I'm a sinner. I'm sorry for my sins. Please forgive me and come into my life. Become the most important person in my life, more important than my family, my friends, or anything that I have. I love you, Jesus. Thank you for dying on the cross for me. If anyone prayed that simple prayer for the first time today, I pray that they would come forward this morning to let us know that they've been saved. And I pray that they would follow you in believers' baptism. Thank you, God, for hearing my prayer. In your name I pray. Amen. I want to invite you to come this morning. I want to invite you to respond to the gospel. We're ready to receive you for membership. You can go ahead and stand. We're ready to receive you for baptism. You come as the Holy Spirit leads. Let's worship